Do you remember standard definition, SD? Yeah, then along came HD, and everything we had was tax, CPU, RAM, storage, everything. And then where are we going now? Well, we're entering into a new era of Ultra HD, 4K, 6K, and beyond. That means the systems that we've built for HD might not be up to it for a 4K world. And what I'm talking about here is the HP Z820 uh, workstation that I'm going to be using here. And, and I'm going to cover a few things. I'm going to talk about RAM, CPU, storage, Thunderbolt, graphics cards, and more. So how does that play into this new 4K and above world? Well, let's look at, as an example, let's look at Apple's flagship product coming out with 12 cores. And your, your first thought might be, wow, 12 cores, that's a lot. It's more than four. But how about two times 12 physical cores? The HP Z820 powered by Intel Xeon processors, there's 24 physical cores in here. And if you turn on hyper-threading, that's 48 cores that we will use. And when it comes to cores, you also need RAM to feed those cores. And the more RAM, the better. Again, Apple's going to be uh, having a system with 64 gigs. That's a lot of RAM, but you won't believe how much RAM I can put in a Z820. Just take a guess, because you're probably way off. 512 gigabytes, a half a freaking terabyte inside a desktop workstation. The HP Z820, you can stick all of that inside there. That's 512 gigabytes of RAM, and we'll use every bit of that in applications like After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Media Encoder. Now, this system doesn't have 512, I wish it did, but we're still going to tax this inside um, Media Encoder and output a whole bunch of files. Now, there is a setting and there's an area that you can set inside our video applications. I want to show you that right now. So this is Premiere Pro, but you can get to this in After Effects and Media Encoder. It's in the Edit menu. Um, it's in the uh, Premiere Pro menu on the Mac. And if we go down to Memory, we can see down in here that we've got, uh, in this system, a smaller amount of RAM, not 512, but each one of these applications is sharing an amount of RAM. So if I start to use that RAM per core, then you're going to run out of RAM. In fact, After Effects really wants to work with 3 gigabytes per core. Do the math, and you're going to start to run out of the ability to install massive amounts of RAM. All right. So, Let's turn this on now and, and see how fast these Intel Xeon processors are going to work when we're inside Media Encoder. Here I've got um, a sequence that I want to send out. So I will just export this out to Media. And I'll just press the Q button here because I want to get into Media Encoder. And I've got a bunch of settings uh, set up here. Um, these are Eric's presets. So the top one is Adobe TV. And when you mouse over, you can, you can see which ones these are made up of. So this is uh, 1280, uh, 720. And then we've got uh, an Android 720 that I wanted. A new iPad dailies with burn-in. A new feature that we have in Media Encoder is the ability to add overlays. So this has a LUT applied, a burn-in, and a graphic uh, that we're going to uh, have inside there too. And then a big old master 444 baby. Yeah, we really want to tax this system. And then another one for Vimeo HD. Um, I'm going to take this whole folder and drag it over top of that output that I had. And I'm just going to get rid of that, that first one I don't really need in there. So I'm just going to get rid of that one. I also want to set where I'm going to be outputting these. So if you haven't seen Media Encoder CC, when you select all of these and click, I can now tell it where I'm going to output these instead of having to do each one individually. So now they're ready to go. I'm going to hit the big green button and let it go. And when I do that, you can see it's going to start to uh, process these. You can see the, the LUT I have added on this one is a pretty crazy one. I just wanted to show you the, the big difference inside there. And all of this is now going to start taking advantage of all of the cores and all of the RAM inside here. We're, we're outputting multiple files at one time. And you can see we now get a readout on the top where we're exporting these out. Really uh, tough things to export like H.264 compression is really going to tax the CPU inside here. 
Because this came from a Premiere Pro timeline, if I've got any accelerated effects applied, they'll also take advantage of a GPU that I might have installed on this system. And if you want big GPU, then you want something like a, an NVIDIA uh, K6000. I mean, the Quadro K6000 has 12 gigabytes of video RAM on it and it requires a lot of power. So you can put multiple uh, GPUs inside the HP Z820. Why? Well, because it actually physically allows you to get inside the system and it can come with an 1100 watt power supply to drive all of those graphics cards inside there. That is a lot of power that you need to be able to uh, process. If we look at our files, they're chunking away here in the big 444 one. That's the one that requires a lot of computing power. Um, you can see it's taking a little longer, but this is going to be so much faster on this system because I've got all of these uh, specs available. Uh, speaking of specs, how about Thunderbolt? We've got an amazing amount of internal storage and capabilities for internal cards, but we now have the addition of Thunderbolt out. So if I've got a solution like my Blackmagic camera, I can now connect it to that or a separate display, different drives that I want. So it's great having that option for Thunderbolt and also the option of internal expansion. So many graphics, uh, graphic cards and internal RAID systems, uh, things like an IOFX card. I can be running all of these inside the ZA20. And you know when it's that much power, it just sits there and says, bring it on. It, it, it's not going to sit there and even, even flinch when you put all of the, that graphic power inside there. So as you can see, moving into this new 4K and beyond world is going to require massive amounts of computing power, not just for this year, but for next year and beyond. So my choice, HP Z820 powered by Intel Xeon processors, 24 physical cores, 48 uh, with hyper threading on, gives me the kind of power and support I'm going to need.